All right, we're back at the Project Accelerator. In the last video, I mentioned that it was possible to automate project creation based on project requests. In this video, I will share two ways to do this. And make sure to like and subscribe to this video. It helps the channel a lot and lets me know that you like what I'm putting out here. So let's have an example of a project request turning into a project. I'll click on new. This is a test and I click on save and notice that I have two additional fields in here. I have this create project field and I have a related project field here. Now if I take the toggle here, it turns into a locked field and I can click on save and in the back end now there is already a project created. So as you can see, this is the project. It has the information that comes from the test and it has a link to the requested, um, the related request. So there's a number of information, uh, there's a number of fields that can be auto filled based on something in the project request, but we'll dive into the details in just a moment. So basically what I created is a TPC additions to the project accelerator, which you can get as a managed solution when you subscribe to the newsletter. In here, I have two options. I have the fast and ugly solution, which is a, uh, which is a process that you create within dynamics. And then there is the pretty, but uh, not so fast solution, which is a cloud flow using Power Automate. So let's have a look at the ugly and fast solution because this is the one that was turned on. So I know that it was the one that got triggered when I set that create project in there. So let's click on create project based on a request. So once that's loaded, and this can take some time, make sure that when you create your own process that you do this in the classical interface of the power apps. Why classic? Because you have a number of options that you don't have when you create it in the modern solution. One of them is run this workflow in the background. Um, normally this would be ticked on and I have a screenshot uh, somewhere on screen now, I believe. And one of the other things is that you have the option to include the uh, record fields that are changed. And well, let's just deactivate this flow or this process and have a closer look at what actually is in here. So what we're doing is we have a process running on the project request it is a workflow type of process. Um, it's not run in the background. That means that it is immediately run after the um, start when criteria is met. So start when after the record field has changed. Now, which record is that? If I click on select now, I will see that the change on the create project is the change that actually needs to happen. Once that change is, um, is done, you will see this flow or this process um, going through its necessary steps. First thing that happens is a, a new project is created. Second thing is that a project request is actually updated. Now that update that it's doing is actually including, is actually including that uh, relationship here to the project. So let's have a look at creating that project, setting properties. Now a number of yellow items will appear. All these items, all these values come from the original request. So what you would do is you would go into one of these fields, find that fields reference in the project request and let's do one live where I have the name of the 
uh, the request. So I have a general creation of a new project. I hover over here. I look at the project request and I can select the name. Where is it? I can select the name. I can click on add and I click on OK. Now for items that are a drop down box, you need to make a selection. After you made a selection, it uh, the same process applies to them as well. So that is basically the way that I figured out how to get data in this part. Now be aware that there is some more information that needs to be filled in here. So we have the business case, values, um, uh, strategic alignment, budgets, benefits, funding, everything is filled in for us uh, once we have this uh, project on the go. And then all the way down there is this contracting unit. This contracting unit actually is something that comes with project for the web and is unique to your environment. So if in any case you would like to use the TPC additions to project for the web or project accelerator, um, make sure to change some of these values in an unmanaged solution for yourself. With that, uh, I will just click on leave and I will open up the project. Same thing applies. Um, if I update the request, I will update that with the project that was newly created in the process. There's an option here to look for the project request or the newly created project or even the process that is currently on the way. That can also be a, a nice trick for other nice uh, processes. Once these changes have been made, make sure to save and activate that process and you are good to go to copy or to process a project request and into a project. Now let's have another look at another example with more data in there. So here is a second request we can have in review, we can have priority being critical. A project type could be security. Um, I don't believe that we're taking this data, but we do have a business case. And we obviously have some values here for our general priority score. We have a budget and we have a lot of benefits and if I click on yes now, I will see a priority score as well as an ROI. And I can say that funding is yes and it is an externally funded project. And now if I click on create project, more data should be processed by the process and the second request should have more data in there. So let's click on second request in here we see the project type is security, proposed, um, the priority is moderate. Um, it has a fixed duration, which is something that you can set within the uh, process. If, for instance, you would like to have that as fixed work or fixed units. I'll not dive deep in that discussion today because, well, it's a bee's nest uh, for everyone that knows project. So business case, business case text, extreme, low, strong, strong, somewhere about 70, that looks familiar. I have my ROI of two. So these values all seem to match. That's all for the ugly but fast solution. Now let's have a look at the pretty but slow solution as well. So I'm going to deactivate this solution again and I'm going to navigate back to my uh, my additional changes and now I'm going to activate the cloud flow now, selecting this one and clicking on turn on which can also be done through these ellipses of course but 
there's multiple ways to roam, right? So the pretty solution is a Power Automate solution. And what this does, it, it basically does exactly the same, but there are multiple ways uh, that you can extend on a Power Flow or a Power Automate flow that you cannot do within a process such as adding approvals, adding emails, adding something in SharePoint, something different. Um, so it might be interesting to look into. Um, so walking you briefly through the steps of this uh, Power Automate flow. What happens when a project request is updated? Only look for the TPC create project which is the, uh, the toggle that we discussed earlier. And if that change is happening, what needs to be done? We would need to have a work template. And that work template is something that is created based on your project for the web entity. Make sure that you know which work template that is. Now, how would you find out? Navigate back to your project for the web or project accelerator solution. Head on over to settings and head on over to calendar. Here we have our default work template and the default work template has a UID. As you can see that UID corresponds with our Power Automate flow as we see here. Now be aware because these are different tables within the dataverse that we're addressing in Power Automate, you might get a trigger that a reference isn't available. That normally means that you need to tell Power Automate that to look into a different table than the original table that is referenced on the trigger. We'll come to that in just a moment as well. So what happens now is we have our trigger, we have our calendar information, and we can now create a new project. So what we'll do is we'll navigate to projects. Uh, we have our calendar ID, and here you have that differentiator uh, that you need to tell um, the dataverse that you're actually referencing a different table than the projects table. So make sure you know what the name is of the table and then have the value in brackets. Same goes for my work hour templates uh, here and here. They can be identical. And other than that, make sure to have all the values that we have on top referenced uh, from the project request. In here, you can also state what type of uh, scheduling mode you would like to have. So we have our three options as discussed earlier. And navigating a bit down, let's see what is in there. Is there any difficulties you might run into? No other difficulties here. So with that creation of that project, we now have a new UID that we can reference in the request. So navigating to the project request, that row ID is identical to the first row ID, right? So it is, it is that body of the project request ID. What we do here is we navigate all the way down and here we have a dash dynamics projects brackets open, that referenced uh, UID, brackets close. And this is the way how you would enter the value for a different table um, through the flow. Then we have the update the project because we also need to have that reference within the project corrected. And navigating all the way down. So here it would be dynamics, project requests, and then the ID of that project request. So let's see this in action. Uh, as I told you, it's prettier 
uh, it might not look pretty but it has at least some nice green and a nice uh, uh, Dataverse logo here. Um, so I would click on save just once. I haven't changed anything, but just to be sure. Once that's saved, I'm leaving the page and I will look into the run history for all runs. Currently, I have a couple of tests that failed and I have a couple of tests that were successful. Here we go. Looking into the, um, the data again. Oh, there is also a parameter that you need to reference, which is the original uh, organizational unit. Remember that from way in the beginning of the video in the process. That is actually this UID that you can reference. So let's navigate to a project request. And let's be sure that I have this one turned on. So the cloud flow is on and the process is off. So I will create another flow test or flow example for video. And I can have my business case text and let's have at least these values in here and some more benefits and that way we know that the data actually gets filled in correctly so once this is in the system I can Let's add the application development as well. Now, if I click on create project and I click on save, I will see that the flow will be running. This can happen any moment now. So let's navigate back to the requests itself and let's click on refresh the flow. And let's do that a number of times. Remember that I told you that this is a pretty but slow solution. This might take up to a couple of seconds, maybe even a minute before it actually starts running. Oh, and just like that, in five seconds ago, it ran successfully in less than two seconds, I would say. And if I refresh this page now, you will see that the flow example for project project is created. Let's have a look at the business case. Business case text is in here. The uh, prioritization is in here as well as our ROI, which is very nice to see. So with that, we have two options to create an automated flow from project creation, uh, from project requests to project creation. If you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe. If you want to rewatch me creating the project accelerator, click on that video on screen right now, and I will see you again soon.